Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. Today is our mid-August garden tour. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen that I put up a weekly garden tour usually, um, but getting near the end of the summer here, things aren't changing as fast and I felt like there wasn't as much to talk about in the garden, so I'm scaling back the garden tours to one or two a month. So over here on the end, I have all of my second summer beans planted. Some of them are just now starting to flower. And again, the ones in the back of the bed are a little behind in terms of growing, even though these were all planted at the same time, um, which is still just very fascinating to me. I don't know why being on that side of the bed would cause them to grow so much slower, but it looks like we will definitely have time for a good crop of beans from here before any sort of frost starts to set in. And over to the right is the tomato jungle. You can see several of them have gone up past their poles, and this one is probably about twice as tall as its pole, um, but it went up and then came back down. Um, so I kind of just stopped pruning it at that point and let it go wild to see what would happen and it's definitely taking over all the space that it can touch. We've got below it a lettuce leaf basil that I'm letting go to flower at this point. Just uh, kind of done with trying to pinch off all the flowers, to be honest, to keep it from flowering. And most of my more preferred basil types, like the purple and the sweet basil, are not yet trying to flower. So it doesn't matter too much to me that the lettuce leaf basils are flowering. But look at this sweet basil. This is probably my favorite basil plant in my whole garden. It hasn't tried to flower at all and it's so bushy and beautiful. And because of that, I actually kind of do want it to flower so I can save the seeds and uh, propagate those nice genetics. Now, last time we talked, I told you about my sweet peppers being a little bit behind where they should be because I planted them out just a little too early in my anticipation. <laughs> but they are starting to look like they've caught up. The Zulu peppers are actually on their second flush of peppers here. Um, I harvested about four or five peppers off of each plant and now they're setting a new set of peppers. And you can see all this new growth coming in at the top. Um, so basically what happens is the pepper, thinking it hasn't reproduced properly when you pick all the fruit off of it, will grow up some more and then try again. Um, and I finally have, if I can get you back here without bumping the camera, a lace of pepper. Oof, yeah. You can kind of see it's got that like beautiful heart shape. Um, and it should turn a bright red when it's ripe. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've got one on each of my three Lesa plants. You can see there's another one right back there. And in front of me, my Buena Mulata. Um, this is probably the best looking plant of the bunch. The Buena Mulatas start out purple and then slowly turn like orangey brown and then red when they are ripe. And these plants have been doing really well for me. They're a good level of spice for like a salsa or a uh, stir fry or something like that. I've also got my Anaheim peppers here looking really nice. This is actually, this plant wasn't supposed to be here. It's supposed to be sweet peppers in this bed. Um, and the uh, friend of mine who was helping me plant out accidentally killed the plant that was supposed to go here. So we just pulled a hot pepper to put here. Um, and this Anaheim is doing really well, especially compared to the ones um, that I have in the back in containers. Um, so hopefully we'll get some really good peppers off of this. This is its first flush of peppers. Um, next to it here, we have a Du d'Espagne. Um, this is one of the sweet peppers. It makes a really big kind of wrinkly bell pepper. And it's starting to maybe put on some fruit. This is one of the ones that got a slow start because I topped it and it decided it wanted to grow up a single stem anyway. 
Um, and so it's just, it's been struggling a lot. It's a uh, friend over here actually does have some peppers on it, which is exciting. You can kind of see that wrinkly structure. They're supposed to get really, really big, nice, sweet peppers. Um, and hopefully that happens, but we'll see. And lo and behold, my kale still has not gone to seed. It actually kind of stopped growing, it seemed, for about a month while it was really hot. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, it's starting to put on some new leaves. You can see the difference between that and the older leaves out here, and I can feel that this is much tougher than this. Um, and so maybe this plant will survive all the way through to the fall, like maybe I won't have to plant more kale. So that's really interesting and cool. And so the tomatoes really are getting near the end of their life. You can see the disease, no matter how much I pluck it off, there's still more. There's some here and you can just kind of see it pretty much everywhere you go. And if I was to pull off, I think all the branches that have infected leaves my tomatoes wouldn't really have too many leaves left. Um, and so I'm just kind of doing the best I can, getting the most infected leaves off and uh, leaving the rest. But it's about the end of the season for tomatoes, you know. So it's not that big of a deal. But I really, really would love if I could get all of this fruit off of them before that happens. And recently I haven't got good fruit because of some massive rain that we got started splitting my tomatoes. You can see that one and then that one way up there is very, very split. And uh, that's what happens when you have a mostly ripe tomato and you get way too much water. The fruit expands and the skin can't keep up and it basically pops itself. Um, in terms of tomatoes that I'm thinking I will grow again next year, probably the Amish paste is my favorite. It's been a really high producer uh, and I just think that it's really great for my purposes which is mostly sauces and uh, canning. Back behind the garden on this hill we have my little forest of random things. So many more marigolds are starting to bloom and it's gorgeous. Hopefully they reseed themselves and start coming back every year in this area. I also have a few random basil plants. Um, there's a bean plant or two that's looking kind of sad, um, but it's fixing nitrogen into the soil, which is its main purpose up here. And hopefully we can just keep a good population of plants in this area uh, because it, if you remember, it was originally bare because I pulled back all the kudzu that had invaded it. Down below me, I still have that volunteer mint plant that is the most delicious mint plant I have ever tasted. I tried to root some cuttings because one of you asked for me to send you a cutting um, and it wouldn't do it. I tried rooting hormone and everything and the leaves just slowly over time turned purple. Um, so if anybody knows what I'm doing wrong to root a mint cutting, let me know. But all I did was stick it in rooting hormone powder and stick it in water. And that's worked for basil for me in the past, and I thought it would for mint, but I guess not. Mm, look at this beautiful view of the garden. Tomatoes go up, up, up. <laughs> Pretty soon we'll have radishes and rutabagas and turnips filling the gaps where the tomatoes have to come out. Alrighty, so we're moving on to the chalice. I replanted this a few weeks ago with noodle beans on this side and uh, purple potted pole beans on this side. This side is doing a little better. I've noticed the noodle beans do take a hot minute to take off, um, but you can see this beautiful purple stem and uh, they're looking pretty healthy probably some of the healthiest beans I've got. So I'm looking forward to having some of those coming up as we get closer to fall. Now a note about the red Malabar spinach. I haven't actually been able to eat spinach off of this plant. Um, it didn't really grow 
voraciously enough for me to feel comfortable pulling leaves off of it. And then of course there was a little bit of um, herbicide damage here at the bottom that came from whatever killed that grass. Um, and so now it's just kind of a pretty plant in my garden. Um, I have seen that some people will use the little berries for dyeing stuff. Apparently they're very, oh wow, yeah that could easily dye some stuff if you're not careful. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll find some Walmart white piece of clothing and practice dyeing something pretty purple. <laughs> Over here we have the squash bed um, and if you saw the last garden tour this little pumpkin plant probably looks about exactly the same as it did three weeks ago um, and because of that I went ahead and planted a couple of little zucchinis um, just to see if I could still get something out of this space before it freezes because I don't think that pumpkin's gonna make any pumpkins for me. And I'm actually thinking these spaghetti squash won't either, because try as I might, I cannot get rid of every single squash bug. I mean, look at this, look at these babies. Baby squash bug, baby squash bug. I come out here every day and squish them, and I still can't really keep them in check. And they haven't tried putting on flowers since the last garden tour, basically. So I'm not super hopeful about getting anything from these squash vines, but I'll let them ride out the season just in case. And of course back here is my trusty sage, who looks amazing no matter what happens, <laughs> um, and always refluffs. If you will believe it, I actually cut this back by about a third um, a few weeks ago, and it already you already can't even see the places where I pulled stuff off. And also something pretty for those of you who've never seen it, this hanging vine right here is a kudzu vine, one of the ones that from that invasive species that I battle all around here. But it looks so pretty with its little flowers hanging out and just dangling from the tree. So pretty. Look at that. If only it didn't grow a foot a day during the summer and didn't invade everything it touched. This would be such a nice plant to have around. But unfortunately, it is, look at those seed pods up there. If y'all can see them hanging it down like right about there and up there they're kind of fuzzy they're gonna be all over my yard very soon and we'll check in on another interesting thing happening just outside the garden um, these are radishes that sprouted from seeds that got dropped here as I was saving seeds from my radishes and I honestly thought they would die because I don't care for them at all um, and they they obviously don't look very healthy, very spotty leaves, um, but they're still here and they haven't gone to seed. Um, and so I don't know, maybe I'll have a weird radish patch over here, but we'll see. We'll keep track of it and just see what happens. Alrighty, so moving on to the actual backyard. Still an absolute jungle back here. In the front, I have my herbs. This particular one, this was the dill which went to seed and then started dying off. So I basically just cut it off and uh, dusted some of the seeds from one of its heads in here. So it has basically reseeded itself and hopefully I'll get another round of dill uh, coming into the winter that I can maybe treat a little better and uh, dry so I have some. The spearmint plant that I thought I killed because I totally forgot to water it and the whole thing went crispy um, is coming back. Um, apparently it's really hard to kill spearmint. Also got some pretty healthy looking oregano, some thyme, and some parsley. Now the parsley is interesting because you can see it's got a bunch of different leaf shapes going on right now. It's probably its reaction to the weather um, and I think once it cools down a little bit it'll be a little more uniform but that's really interesting to me. That it's just starting to make leaves of different shapes randomly. And I checked, this isn't a different plant. This is coming from the same plant. Excitingly, my ginger is probably getting close to time to harvest. Let's see if I can dig in here and uh, show you guys a little root. Oh man, these leaves are getting in the way. Okay. There we go. 
there's a root from the ginger. Um, and once it gets big enough, basically what I'll do is I will start just harvesting as I need it. Um, so some is always growing and just if I need some, I just have fresh ginger. So that'll be really nice. Now if we look up, these are the yard tomatoes. And I basically let them go wild. Uh, still putting on little bits of fruit. They're all Amish pastes. I've got some fruits in here. And there's a very long one over there. Um, these ones don't have as much disease, but they were a little late too. And they obviously don't come in contact with as much soil, which is where a lot of the bacteria that cause disease in tomatoes come from. Um, over here we have the tomatillos, which I've had to cut back because they just have been reaching over everything and not really producing fruit for how big they are. There's a few on here, but I wouldn't say that these are really worth the space for me because um, I'm getting like one fruit every two weeks or so from these things. And something likes to eat them, obviously, so maybe they're not doing as well as they could. Now if we take a look at the hot peppers, there's some very sad news. If you didn't see it on my Instagram, I had to deal with some tomato hornworms that basically ate some of my pepper plants overnight. This one got eaten, and then this one, Serrano, over here got eaten. Um, the happy ending to this story, maybe, is if you look real close, you can see the new growth that this plant is pushing out. Even though every single leaf, except for this one at the bottom, was eaten off of it, it is going to come back. And I think that's amazing. It's really encouraging to see that. And of course this plant won't produce for me the way it would if it hadn't gotten eaten, but maybe I'll still be able to get something from it before the frost. Oh man, we've got another one that got eaten over here. And then pieces of other plants got eaten. I've got the top of my cayenne got eaten. But for the most part, these peppers back here are doing all right. Um, I've got lots of cayennes sitting on this plant. Um, I've got more Anaheims back here. This one's got a spot. I'm not sure if that's blossom end rot or something else. Pepper feels really healthy besides that, so I'm going to let it ripen and maybe I can just cut the end off. Unfortunately, um, one of my Tabasco peppers still isn't producing at all. You can see it's over here by the tomatillo. Nothing looks particularly wrong with him, but has not set any fruit whatsoever. So I think that's really weird. The Sugar Rush peaches are probably doing the best out of everything. I've been getting lots of fruits off of these. They take a long time to ripen. They start out this like really light lemony color and then they turn more of a deeper peach. And uh, these Tabasco peppers are starting out the same color, but they're going to turn orange and then red, which is going to be really cool. Um, to see because they point upwards it kind of looks like the plant is flowering from a little bit of a distance Look at this beautiful jalapeno So I wanted to show you this this right here on it is called corking um, And it's something that happens to peppers when you leave them on the plant and they start to Really ripen especially peppers that you might normally eat green that will start to still turn red um, if you leave them um, this is fine. You haven't done anything wrong. This is just kind of what normally happens to peppers like this. Um, but this is ready to pick and eat basically whenever I'm ready for it. Now this sad plant over here, um, is my pumpkin, my big pumpkin. And, uh, again, I was not able to control the squash bugs. I squished so many squash bugs and you can see it's still super easy to just find some hanging out on the plant. There's one on that leaf over there. Um, oh my god, there's another one. I killed so many of these guys. I looked for their eggs every day, um, and it seems like there was nothing I could do. Next year, so I've done some research, and next year 
um, there's going to be a little bit more of an aggressive plan in place to control these guys naturally. We'll be looking at attracting natural predators, making sure that they don't have a place to overwinter, um, and things like that. So hopefully next year they won't be as big of a problem. Um, and I can't go too far back here because there's a spider web in my way, but back here where the cucumbers used to be, I have planted more cucumbers. One and two came up. Um, there should have been one more in the middle. Um, and these are growing slowly because this is a shady spot. Um, even in the middle of summer, this doesn't get as much sun as a lot of other places. So everything back here is going to grow a little more slowly than it otherwise would. Um, but a really encouraging sign is right there. You see those mushrooms. Um, that indicates like a good fungal population in the soil, which means that anything that grows here will probably do really well and be healthy. Oh, and of course there are these pepper plants. The uh, proof that I planted my others too early because they are loaded. This is my most successful pepper plant so far. And I was an idiot and I didn't label it. So I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's not looking like cayenne to me or serrano or jalapeno. My best guess is Edgevarsky because those tend to have more of a point on the end. But just like this one plant is massive. And I wish I had waited to put out all of my other pepper plants so that they would all be this healthy. All right guys, well, that is the tour. I'll see you again in another two or three weeks for another tour. Hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Uh, and catch me for some fall planting videos in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy gardening.